stopping distance depends on thinking and braking distances. Remember that if a driver sees something that causes them to suddenly stop, such as a cat running into the road, then the stopping distance is the distance travelled between this danger appearing and the car actually stopping. We split this distance up based on the distance when the brakes are actually applied. Before this point, we have the thinking distance. This is the distance travelled between the danger appearing and the brakes being applied. We can actually calculate this using a driver's initial speed and their reaction time. Or we can measure the distance directly. Then, after the brakes are applied, we have the braking distance. This is the distance the car travels as it's decelerating. The changing speed makes this distance tricky to calculate so braking distances will always be given to you directly in an exam. From this diagram, we can see that putting these two distances together gives us the same as the overall stopping distance. This is because the stopping distance is equal to the thinking distance plus the braking distance. Here, all three terms have the same units of distance, usually metres. This is an equation you'll need to be able to recall or potentially even write out for your exam. So let's practice using it with an example. A driver is speeding at 20 metres per second when a set of traffic lights 40 metres away turn red. The driver takes 0.8 seconds to react before applying their brakes. The braking distance of the car at this speed is 25 metres. Determine if the driver manages to stop before reaching the traffic lights. So this seems like quite an involved example, so we should make sure to read the question carefully and make sure we understand it. This leads us to step one, where we need to write down the key information and check the units. So this question is about stopping, so we'll need the thinking distance and the braking distance in order to find a stopping distance. We're not told the thinking distance, but we have that the driver's speed is 20 metres per second and their reaction time is 0.8 seconds. We'll be able to use these to calculate the thinking distance in metres. Now, braking distance is too complicated to calculate at GCSE, so we've been given this directly as 25 metres. These units match what we'll get for the thinking distance. Lastly, we're told that the lights are 40 metres away and we're asked whether the driver stops before them, meaning we need to compare the stopping distance to this value. Let's start by figuring out our missing piece of information. So for step two, calculate the thinking distance using the given speed and reaction time. We can do this using the equation distance equals speed times time. So in this case, the thinking distance is found by multiplying 20 metres per second by 0.8 seconds. This gives us a thinking distance of 16 metres. You won't always have to do this extra step in an exam. You might be given both the thinking distance and the braking distance directly. But make sure you don't get confused about what to do with thinking distances and reaction times. Now we can do step three calculate the total stopping distance, which we can do using our equation stopping distance equals thinking distance plus braking distance. We just calculated that the thinking distance is 16 metres and we're told that the braking distance is 25 metres. So the stopping distance is equal to 16 plus 25, which equals 41 metres. But remember, the question didn't just ask us to calculate this distance. We have one more step to go. In step four, compare the distances to determine if the car stops before reaching the lights. So we've calculated a stopping distance of 41 metres, which is greater than 40 metres. This means that the car stops after the lights, which is the final answer the question is looking for. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy-to-follow videos and more. 
you'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE Physics course. See you there.